Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I know I said I'd um, probably start the next episode with me on another planet, but I tweaked a couple of things first, so I wanted to sort of quickly show off what I'd done before I blast off. So before, we had this whole system here for filling up rockets and getting um, and getting everything I needed into the rocket in order to take it off to a, off to a, a far-flung planet and, and uh, make sure I had everything I needed up there. So what I've done is I've put together this shopping list and here's a... Um, Here's one I made from screenshots, and the way I did this was basically by dragging a deconstruction planner over a huge area of the base, like that, over, over one of my outposts, and looking at the numbers that popped up along here, <laughs> and then um, and then just taking a, a screenshot of that and, uh, and using that as a starting point. So using that, I've got these combinators over here that have essentially the negative numbers of everything I'm going to need, and I've increased the numbers a little bit. So you can see we've got minus 800 drills, even though I reckon reckoned I needed to have at least um, what was it 500. So I thought a few extra ones would be good in there, and I've done that for basically everything. I've then gone in and added a few extra things in that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need, like ro uh, the construction robots and uh, logistics bots, because I, I, I didn't think of those, or rather they didn't show up in the um, in the deconstruction planner. Some industrial furnaces, because I'm going to need that for um, the specific iridium processing, and some meteor defense installations, because I'm going to start wanting to, I'm going to start putting these in on all of my um, my planets. In fact, I might just bounce around my solar system doing these everywhere, uh, because there's so much stuff getting destroyed by meteorites that I, I'm getting fed up of it, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, then I've got some uranium, uh, both types, and that's so that I don't have to do the Covarex wait when I get out there. Because there is some um, there is some uranium out there on the planet, but I don't want to have to wait for it to all get um, uh, Covarex naturally. I want to be able to just immediately do um, go in and start enriching it from straight up, which which is why I've got some centrifuges as well. Although now I think about it, I'm not going to be able to get the um, the mining uranium mining up and running until I've got some. Um, until I've got until I've got sulfuric acid, and that's going to need power in order to get the coal, in order to get this, that, and the other. So actually, I should probably take some. I should probably take some nuclear fuel as well. Although there's enough uranium here, you only need 40-ish for the Covarex. So I could use this. I could use half of this and some of this to make some fuel cells. A better idea, I think, would be to grab some fuel cells and take them with me as well. So I'll put some of them in the rocket as well. And fuel cells aren't on the. Um, on the uh, RoboPort network, which is a bit of a shame, so I'm going to have to go and get those manually. Okay, and let's say I also want to have 50 nuclear fuel cells, that's in here, those ones. And I'll, I'll, I'll put them all in. No, I should just put those straight in the rocket and those in here so they can be taken somewhere else. <coughs> Climb out of the uh, satellite dish. Okay, so that's, <coughs> that's my rocket basically set up. Now, I was, um, the thing is, this rocket is now almost full, which means there isn't going to be enough room in this to put in sufficient fuel to bring me back again. So at this point, I have two choices. I can either make fuel on the other planet, which means I'm going to be cracking um, coal and using large amounts of coal to turn it into rocket fuel, or I can take it in another rocket. So I've got another rocket here that's got about just over 2,000 rocket fuel in it, and we've been fueling this one up, and in fact it is now fueled up, and it's ready to go to Kothar as well. And this is based on the um, a suggestion somebody else made in the comments, saying that if you just fly out there in a rocket without any important cargo in it first, and take a landing pad with you, then you don't need to worry so much about having the... Um, the rocket crash land, that your rocket full of useful stuff crash land, some of it will get destroyed, some of it will, um, and, and it'll all be in completely the wrong place. So if I go out in the first rocket and use that as a scouting rocket, so I'll fly out to Kothar, Kothar, where is it? This one. Fly out here, and then I can flit around with my with my jetpack and put, park myself around here somewhere, because this is where I wanted to put my base. Then I can put down the landing pad and have the rocket land exactly where I want it. So even if I land over here, yeah, I'll have to get the rocket fuel over there somehow. But I can do, I can do that with the train probably. The rest of the all the rest of the stuff will already be in the right place. So that's going to make that a bit easier. Another thing I've done, and this also is based on um, comments I've been getting, is apparently it turns out these. I was I, I thought these well I assumed without actually looking into it at all that the signal receivers and transmitters the channels had to be numbers because they're all set to channel 0 or channel 1 when you build them in the first place. But it turns out actually you can call them whatever you like. So I've called this one from orbit. Up here I've got ones called 
uh, from Tulip, from Hank, from Orbit, from Miokin, and from Frost. And so all of these, just now it's a bit easier to tell where they're connected to, and it's a bit easier to program them. So um, that's going to make things a lot easier. <laughs> so thank you to uh, the person who suggested that. So that's, that's very useful. But now, I think I'm pretty much ready. I'm going to have a bit more of a think before I actually do blast off in the rocket, because I'm sure there's going to be something I've forgotten. If we look at this chest here, this is hooked up to the logistics network, so it's picking up the command from the from the logistics network, same as same as this one here actually. So what we've got is this: these ones are all negative. They're added to what's in the rocket to produce, well, a number. That's then negated so that if the if there's more miss, so we subtract. Essentially, we take what's in the rocket, we subtract the numbers in this um, chest. In these, sorry, in these request combinators, and then we use this to flip that over so we can tell this chest to then request it. So I'm still waiting for two more roboports and 558 mining drills to be brought over. Uh, so I can't, I don't want to launch this rocket until that's until that's finished. The problem is the, there are, there isn't a great deal of electric, there aren't a great deal of electric mining drills available because once again that was another thing where I had the um, the problem with the the electric motor recipe changing. Uh, where were they? they? They're along here somewhere. Yes, here we go. So this one. So I had to come down. Basically, I had to come down here and put this put this um, inserter in, and then this started working, making them. But it's making them relatively slowly. So there's actually only 14 there, uh, 15 there, and there are bots coming down to grab all of those and take them up. So this is this is rather a slow process. But fortunately, I set this going a little while ago. So there is now many where are they here we go um one or two almost 250 <laughs> uh, mining drills in here so we're about a, a third a quarter of the way there so this is going to take a while um but fortunately there's been quite a lot of other things i've been thinking about and scratching my head over and just trying to get everything else ready before i blast off and i've also real i also keep realizing things i've forgotten so this one is is sort of my my thing of afterthoughts these these two are the ones that came from my um check of the of the other base and just look, looking at what was there and and making and getting ready to make essentially a copy of it and then this one is my afterthoughts so some of the extra nuclear stuff so i can actually process the uranium on um on kothar i can kick start my um, my um my nuclear power plant i can actually start i can i can skip the cover x weight i can put some asteroid defenses up and so on so all of these are oversights which makes me think that i need to spend a bit more time thinking about possible oversights as well before I before I head off over there. I think I mean I think I've got everything I need. But then I've got everything I've thought of. There might be some things I haven't thought of. Um I've remembered rocket parts, that's okay. I've got some construction I've got all the I've got the machines for doing all the processing. Most of it's chemical plants and uh, furnaces and things. And I've pro probably got far more than I need here, but I don't care about that. I'd rather take too many than too few. I've got bits of trains. I don't know if I've got enough bits of trains, but I've got some trains. I've got lots of signals. I've got stations. Hopefully this is going to be everything I need, but yeah, knowing my knowing my, my ability to plan, it's probably not. So I'm going to stop um, I'm going to stop the video here and, um, and have a bit more of a think. And, well, the next time you see me, I'll definitely be on the other planet, unless I come up with something really important to talk about. <laughs> Catch you in a moment. And here we are on Kothar. So I've done the uh, two rocket thing this time, I've decided. It seemed it seemed like a good idea, and I'm quite glad I did, because the um, rocket, the, the um, yeah, my first rocket dropped me in all the way up here somewhere. There's a little pile of red stuff. Yeah, those those red things are the... Um, let's scroll up here manually. Let's just show how far away it, it dropped me in from where I wanted to be. So way up here somewhere, and I can't even see them on the map, somewhere around here my um, drop pod landed me. Here we go, here's the crash site. <laughs> so as you can see there's all these um, containers. They're basically, they've basically just got rocket fuel in, so I will need to come up here at some point to get all the rocket fuel from them because I'm going to need that to get home again. But basically it's a million miles away from everything, so I'm not going. I'm just going to ignore it uh, for, for for the time being. Um, while I'm waiting, though, so I noticed that my rocket back on Norvis is very slowly filling up with um, with with mining drills, and as you can see, there's still 300 of them left to go. It's taking forever. I might have to launch it with without the full complete full complement. But the problem is, I've just got this one machine down here making them, and it got left way behind. There's supposed to be a um, hundred of them, that's not enough. 
There's supposed to be a thousand of them in the chest, but it just always at 500. I'm not sure either way, but it's just not a. It just wasn't keeping up because it wasn't getting the electric motors it needed. Now that's fixed. It, it is producing them, but quite slowly. What is interesting is that they've produced 5,300 of these drills in total, and yeah, that seems like a lot. But they are scattered all over the solar system, so maybe it's not quite so ridiculous. If we look back over here on um, uh, Kothar again. You can see that while I've been waiting, I've been sketching out the basic plans for my uh, new factory. So, so far I've got the... Um, in fact, this is this is much the same sort of design I normally use. Over here we've got the uh, the rack of tra uh, railway stations to drop for all the resources to be dropped off in. I'm going to need to reprogram some of these just to make sure they're all dropping off the right things in the right place. But it's it's a good sketch. Then we've got um, smelting here to make to make the iron, steel, and copper that I'm going to need, and then all the usual stuff all the way along here to make the delivery cannon capsules. And again, I'm going to need to reprogram that, but that's not a problem. I've got um, a nuclear power station here waiting to be built, and there's a, a, a supply of uranium somewhere around here. Here it is, a little little uranium mine of what 200 200,000, which I'm hoping will last me long enough, and I think it should. And a station for that got a station over here I think for yes there's a nice big copper patch here that's a, about a bajillion 19 million that'll last for ages and all the station for that and then way down here we've got the same sort of thing going on for coal for the ir iridite that I, is why I came here in the first place and for iron ore as well and this is this is what 4.2 million plus some little bits around it so there's nearly 5 million iron available there and, and again that should keep me going for a long time there's plenty of these iridite patches scattered around the planet so I can I can expand into those if I need to my biggest concern is stone so there is a patch of it here but it's only about 800 oh no I take it back there's another one here so between these two and it's really hard to see against the uh, the background here, uh, which might be might mean there's quite a lot of it around. And I've just not seen it because it's so hard to see. But between these, there's like a million and a half, getting on close to like, close to two million. So that's and there's a little tiny bit over there, but it sh it should keep me going for a while. Uh, and some more iron there as well. There's, there's there's plenty of all of the other resources around. Coal is possibly the most worrying, but there's a five million of it down here, and that's going to be fine. But I am going to need to. Be Ooh, heavy oil. That's something I need to put in the rocket. I nearly forgot that. Ooh, that would have been frustrating. Um, yeah, so there's a big coal patch here that I need to um, need to plunder before I go, before, uh, before, which I'll be using in order to make all of the oil-based products I need. And yeah, that's as far as I've got so far. As I said, I'm waiting for all the drills to be um, put in, into the rocket so I've got what I need. And I have also put in a, a landing pad here so we can get a nice tidy landing from the other rocket. I need to remember to program it to come here. And then we've got the um, setup of to, to unload it into these um, into these chests so the uh, roboports can actually use all of the stuff that I brought with me and, and build everything up. Now I'm wondering if I should actually put it here or maybe I should move it up here closer to the, um, uh, the, the nuclear power plant. And the reason I'm thinking that is because if I start here then I'm going to be running off the little burner generators, and the and the ro and the robots are probably going to prioritise most of the stuff around here because it's sort of it's, it's nearby. Whereas I actually probably want to prioritise up here and get this up and running properly before I actually start building all the rest of it. So I might just tweak this, move that, move the landing pad up here somewhere, just so, just to get this done first, and I can pull up one or two of these um, roboports and get us and get it to so, so to make sure the right things get built first. And I've, I've dropped some roboports in, so... Can I see my roboports, please? Apparently not. Essentially, maybe it's because they're not powered. But I've put, I've, put, I've put them in, so they basically cover all of the main base here, but they don't go out this... Uh, they don't go out to any of the mines. But that should be enough. One of the things is, because of the way I sketched this out, rather than using um, file to lay the railway lines, there aren't any signals along here, apart from a few here and there where the where they're included in the blueprints. So I'm going to need to go around and signal the, the air tracks as well. But that won't well, that won't be too bad. Right, let's put that oil in the um, in the rocket before I forget it, because that's the sort of thing I would do, and then be really frustrated and possibly consider launching another rocket just to bring it up there. So let's program it into no, is this one into here my afterthoughts thing so I need heavy oil uh, but I don't need a great deal of it 10 barrels is probably is going to be plenty can it do that that's the question no there isn't any on the logistics network great um, there's loads up here and I've been meaning to get rid of this for ages now so if I <laughs> yes if I just pull up a chunk of this belt 
then that'll put all of the uh, barrels into the logistics network and the bots will bring them over. Excellent. Wee, lots of bots. <laughs> I do like doing that when there's just the way they all swoop in like that. So they'll dump them into here. And then we should get some logistics bots bringing them up here. Or maybe they already have, I don't know. Yes, there, there they are. There's my 10. Is 10 going to be enough? Let, let's check this because I'll feel really stupid if I get it wrong. Fifty heavy, heavy oil. Oh, that's, that's loads. Yeah, that's more than I need. In fact, I look here. Yeah, I only need twenty-five. So one barrel would actually be enough. So that ten is, is serious overkill. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to disappear again and um, get on with get on with some building. So uh, I'll see you in a mo. Okay, I've got seven hundred drills in this now. I'm going to decide that's probably going to be enough and just launch this rocket because I'm getting kind of impatient and I want to get on with it. So let's see. So we've got capsule, it's all, all there, everything's in. Well, there's lots and lots of stuff in, hopefully that's everything I need. There's a bit of space left at the bottom there. Um, we'll see whether whether we find anything else to go in there or not. Uh, we're going to Kothar, Kothar landing pad, because I've put one in now, that's good. And I can, so let's launch it. And actually what I wanted to do, I nearly forgot, was disconnect that from there. So that I don't end up just putting all of the stuff into a new rocket, when I don't really need it. So, rocket will fly over, it'll come down, it'll land on this landing pad down here, which I did move up to uh, near the nuclear site. Here it is. Now there are a few things I need I need from this rocket, so let's have a look. First thing is I need the burner generators, which are those, and I need the robots, which are those. And I'm going to turn off my personal logistics for now, just for sake of sanity. So I'll put all of the robot, all the construction bots, except for those, I'll keep them and logistics bots in, in here and I'll give it some repair packs as well because you never know when it's going to need them then I'll put these down like that and fuel them with some of this rocket fuel I got in my inventory and now we've got power so that's now as you can see this kicks in this starts working and it's and I've connected it up with these pylons to this robo port where I put all of, all of the robots so now they all start flying around, and as the stuff that's needed for the um, for the build comes out of the rocket land landing pad, goes into these boxes, the uh, the robots will come out and grab it. So everything starts to get built. And now, in theory, now as, as I said, I'm, I'm prioritising all of the stuff up here for the for the power plant first. So. I'm not sure what's, what's being unloaded. There's, there's a lot of stuff to be unloaded from here. So there's railways coming out at the moment, which we don't need. Now there's the uh, the pylons have come out. So here come the bots to get the pylons. And there must be the other type of pylons. And now all the pipes are coming out. And we need a lot of pipes in this. So those are all going to get placed. And now you see this 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 robot port up here has started to charge because the pylons have been put down. Let's put in that radar myself because I can. Um, so now we should see another swarm of robots coming up. Yes, here they come with... All, wow, that's a lot of stuff. All the stuff for this bit, and probably a lot of this part. The uh, actual, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reactors and power plant as well. <laughs> and then, of course, all the robots need to charge back up again, and that's going to run a bit slowly because, um, yeah, we're not really making enough power for what for the for, the, for all the demands on on this because these these. Um, uh, these burner generators don't produce a huge amount of power. But once this all gets put down, I can then get the nuclear plant fired up and running. And then, once that's actually turned on, power won't, will basically never be an issue ever again, because I'll have I've got all of the um, all of the power all of the uh, fuel cells I brought down here with me, and all of the uranium I brought with me so I can just, I can kick start it off that and then I can worry about starting to dig up this uranium patch over here and then once I've got that on the on, on the flowing in, then everything will just just work, TM. So hopefully I brought enough ura enough fuel cells to uh, to, sort of, to get the, the entire base bootstrapped and up and running. I'm I'm pretty optimistic because it doesn't use that much power to just start it going. <laughs> of course, typically that that one that pump up there is just outside the RoboPort range, so I'm going to need to do that one manually. Um, let's get the robots to bring bring them out to me. Here we go, here's all the stuff I've just requested. I can fly up here, get my robots to finish this off. 
<laughs> now there's the oh I didn't I didn't put power in for them that bit that's a bit of an oversight. Yeah, so that's one of the things about um, space ex oops, space exploration is that these pumps actually require power now, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a shame. It makes it slightly harder to bootstrap a base, but never mind. And let's get the fuel cells. Come on, robots! Oh, here they come. That's that. And then let's put let's put four in each um, machine for now. That might be excessive. Two or three might have been sufficient, but never mind. I want to, I want to get them up and up to temperature, and I don't really want to have to worry about it. So as you can see, temperature is now quickly rising. <clears throat> temperature on these uh, heat pipes is also rising, up to 50 degrees. I didn't see what cold was actually on these. I should. Oh, I can't find out very easily. Probably 20 degrees. That would make sense. And the temperature in the um, heat exchangers is rising as well. So this is very quickly getting. Get, this is, as you can see, this is the sort of what the fourth planet I've done now and I'm actually starting to learn how to do it and how to how to get things right without making complete another pig zero of it. <laughs> okay, so I'll um I'll get on with it and I'll uh, come back to you once I've got I don't know, a bit more done. And now we're nearly there. I've just been off in this uh, train I've built all the way up along this line from by the copper mine all the way up here. Around this sort of kink because it's quite hard to control a train that's going full speed when it's using LTN, so it's a bit of a funny shaped track. And then up to here, which is where the, the crash site was. And so I've picked up all of the fuel and scrap and other sort of bits and pieces that were there. But I thought oh, I'd just left the, the uh, railway line in because, well, mostly out of laziness to be honest, because it's a bit of a faff to pick it all up again. And this train here gives you an idea of the sort of difference in size between the trains and the rockets. Um, I needed basically all of this in order to carry the, uh, the the fuel and the bits and pieces from that rocket all the way down here. But in the meantime, since the last um, since I la last left you, I've been working on this this um, new new outpost. So we've got down here we've got the the basics of the of the, it's building up the delivery cannon capsules as as before, and I've put in some. Um, Astro some meteorite defences as well because I had had a couple land right in the middle of the smelting area and just decided it was worth worth putting these together so that doesn't happen again. The problem with this is that it's quite heavy on the batteries. Uh, each one of these uses uh, let's have a look uses ten batteries, so that's using up all of the sulfuric acid I'm producing at the moment, which means that these tanks aren't filling up at all, which means we're not taking any up to the uranium mine up here. So this hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, that's going to... Eventually this this pile of them will back up all the way along here, then the acid can all pour, pour down into these um, into these tanks. The problem is that the sulphur's not coming through fast enough. Um, actually, now it looks like that is now due to the um, there only being one sulphur uh, producing machine. Before it was because I wasn't producing the petroleum gas fast enough, because the, um, the coal liquefaction was still filling up these two tanks to, well, wherever, wherever they are now. And is this one running flat out? No, it's not. So I need probably need. To, I could put in some more of these machines doing the um, doing the cracking of, of uh, light oil to, to petroleum gas, and uh, then it would run a bit faster. So I think I might do that because that does seem to be a bit of a, a thing at the moment. Especially as not only do I require sulfuric acid for mining the uranium up here, it's also needed for mining the iridium all the way down here, which is the whole point of this outpost. So I need this stuff to come through pretty quickly. Or well, what's what's the what's the point in having the whole thing here? And Miokin's getting. Beaten. Oh, this is the um, coronal mass ejection. I've forgotten about that. I've forgotten that was coming. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, that's just rampaging through my uh, solar arrays. That's not great because that had already these had already taken a bit of a beating from the um, from the asteroids coming in. But to be honest, there wasn't really anything at all I could do about this. Is that it? looks like it. There wasn't really anything I could do about this because the the only place I've managed to do any sort of defense against the uh, coronal mass ejection is back on Norvis because I've got the, the big nuclear plants there and I can stockpile enormous quantities of steam. Here on uh, Miokin it's all down to um, solar power generation and I simply don't have the um, the power storage capacity to, to deal with a coronal mass ejection up here. Still fortunately there seem to be a lot of repair packs up here so they'll do what they can I guess I have been thinking that I need to do another sort of run round all of my uh, all of my planet planet um, outposts and just sort of 
repair all of them, bring them all back, sort out any issues they're having. For example, on um, on Tulip, I've discovered that one of my trains isn't, has run out of fuel, and it's run out of fuel in a really silly place here, so it's just blocking the whole area up. Um, and that... I'm actually surprised that one has run out there. Because, oh, yeah, there, there just isn't isn't enough fuel in the um, in the depot, so that's, that's having problems there. Um, there's probably little bits of damage here and there from... Um, meteorites I'm not sure I'm not sure I don't see any actually so this might be okay but the other thing I want to do when I go out to all the other planets is put up the um, the me meteor defense li uh, like I have here basically a, a sort of copy exact copy of this and I think I should be able to do this everywhere because it doesn't use anything particularly difficult it's just using um, uh, stone and copper for the circuits iron sulf sulfur and more copper for the batteries and then that and a bit of steel to make the actual ammunition. The guns I'll take out with me and put them in place. So this this sort of thing should be easy enough to copy over onto the, onto other planets as well. So while I've been up here, I've got all the mines I, I showed you before up and running. So we've got the stone up here, that's done. Copper somewhere, here it is, copper. And then iron and coal down here. These are all fine. It's just the um, iridite one and the... Uh, and the uranium that needs the sulfuric acid in order to get the mining working. So I'm, I'm a bit, a little bit stuck on those for the moment. Uh, but when, yeah, get, make, making progress. I've just now that I've got the fuel, I've dropped in this um, fuel processor here to start f filling up the the rocket silo here, uh, which is now full of all the bits it needs, uh, except one of those. Um, and I want to, don't want to go to the orbit, I'm going to want to go back to um, Norvis with this one, and there's a landing pad there. So that's, yeah, it requires another sort of 60,000 fuel, but that's getting gradually brought over by the by the construction bots, so that should just should fill up nicely. So that's pretty much it for this episode, I think. Um, as you can see, this this base is now it's now essentially finished. All of the all of the infrastructure is in place. The only problem is that the um, the sulfuric acid isn't being produced fast enough for those miners. So I'll drop in some more of these. Oh, it's in this water as well. Ah. Um. Okay, let's do it like this then. Oh, it's not going to work. Uh, I'm going to have to redesign this a little bit. If, uh, yeah, so if I take these, if I take, have these as underground pipes like that. And then run this one up like that, and just connect it through like no, like that. Uh, and yes, it's going to need power, and it's exerters to get the finished sulfur out. Why isn't it interesting? There we go. Oh, I picked that up in order to yeah move some around. There we go. So now I've got a much healthier flow of sulfur coming out of here. The question is, can this keep up? And yeah, it seems to be just about. So that's that's all right. Uh, 18,000, Maybe not. Maybe it can't quite keep up. So I'm, I might put in put in a few more of these as well. Uh, let's do this by copy paste rather than doing it manually. Uh, want another lot of that there. Except there's a rock in the way. There we go. Okay. Now we've got a lot more sulfur flowing through here. I don't know whether that's it may it may still not fill this up because we may just find out find the batteries get made a little bit quicker. But it'll get me to the point where I do actually have sulfuric acid available for the trains. Oh okay, these these have already kicked in and started firing, so they we've shot down four meteorites apparently. Um, or something based on probability around that number. And down here we've got yeah, oh we're actually starting to fill up a little bit. We've got about a thousand or a thousand and a half in each of these now, <laughs> whereas they were practically empty before. So it, yeah, that's that's made that's made some good progress. Okay, at the beginning of the next episode, I will um, hope to show you the... That isn't vitamin lunch pickup, that's irid iridite pickup. Um, I hope to show you that I'll, I've finished off the um, iridite processing, and this uh, delivery cannon here will be ready to start firing that back to Norvis and uh, and supply and supplying the rest of the rest of my facilities. Um, I think that shouldn't be too, shouldn't be too difficult. I hope, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes over the next um, uh, while until the next episode. <laughs> I hope I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.